So we're really looking at this beautiful scripture and we're finding that there is a very direct correlation spoken in satsang in a very condensed form and sometimes because it is so condensed it can seem like it is obvious this already that's why we are relaxing through the verses taking our time going over every word because every word has so much meaning in these beautiful scriptures and we are finding that this is what has been spoken about in satsang and it's a beautiful way to actually have a framework around what has been shared here because verses we are finding that it is familiar not just in the content but also familiar in terms of the voice which is speaking it seems like it is the same voice that is using this mouth now to speak the voice of the sadguru which is your own holy presence so as much attention as we feel is possible to give and it's very beautiful because in the ashtavakra gita it is just upon hearing the chapter 1 that janaka came to the recognition of his real self just a few verses were enough to allow him to let go of his personal identity and the same is possible for us right here right now so let's let's continue where we left off so we were reading chapter 1 instruction on self realization and i'll quickly go through all the verses that we've already read so it starts with janaka saying master how is knowledge to be achieved detachment required and liberation attained already very beautiful isn't it because in this is the encapsulation of self realization what it actually means recognition but the dropping of the conditioning as well the detachment is this clear for most of us <laughs> then ashtavaka says to be free shun the experiences of the senses like poison <laughs> turn your attention to forgiveness sincerity kindness simplicity truth third <laughs> most likely later on yeah. it's very beautiful also to uh, for someone who is new to satsang and they are wondering okay all this is fine but what do i do if this question is still bothering us then we can focus a bit on this paragraph my feeling is not to focus on this one too much because it just feels like this was inserted later it does not feel like it belongs in this text so then ashtavakra says water fire or air nor are you empty space liberation is to know yourself as awareness alone the witness of these we discussed this yesterday and we found that the mind can have this tendency when we say that we are not material in any way then a sense of space it is i must be like this space like dark space or white light or something like this but even that we are not who witnesses even this you see that is the question which the sage is asking and he is also answering saying liberation is to know yourself as awareness alone again a very important point that we discussed yesterday to know yourself as awareness alone you see not as a discovery outside of me because many times in satsang this can happen that we feel like oh awareness is there but what about me still that i am this 
awareness even i am you see so that's why this is a very important uh, verse so this was 1.3 1.4 is abide in awareness with no illusion of person you will be instantly free and at peace very beautiful you see just in three lines abide in awareness abide in awareness nothing actually but the sage tells us that all that is needed is don't have this illusion that you are a person right? so don't have this illusion that you are a person and effort so to abide in awareness is not something that we have to do it is our natural most natural state even before the sense of being comes that i am even before that we are aware you see yeah so to abide in awareness means to have no illusion of personhood and you will be instantly free and at peace you see so just for a minute we we'll look at this in, in is it possible like this you see completely because we are free now you see we are free right now we are free happens now you see and the dropping of the conditioning is also now going to happen in the future the dropping of the conditioning only means that we are surrendered in this moment we are not picking up a concept about how this life should be what should happen next we are not picking up our next thought you see so freedom must be now it is not something to be attained in the future then he says you have no caste or duties you are invisible unattached formless you are the witness of all things be happy so since it was written many years ago then uh, we know that the caste system was prevalent in india at that time it seems uh, politically incorrect this that i'm uh, talking about caste but uh, we are just uh, looking at this from a higher perspective which is to see that when the illusion of personhood is not there then the attributes which can be attached to this so called person also drop you see the person drop it important that he says or duties you see so not only are the attributes dropping but also the sense of doership dissolves so duties must be to that idea that we had about ourselves that i have to do something you see now these duties also drop so the way to look at this is to see that no attributes and no doership can then remain you see because he goes on to explain that you are invisible unattached formless you see you are the witness of all things be happy <laughs> you are invisible unattached formless you are the witness of all things be happy first is the dissolution of personhood no personal attributes or and what remains then without attributes <coughs> it just this what what he says invisible actually means without any attributes unattached that which are without attributes this awareness cannot attach to something in reality you see so all the attachments were about this idea of the person never truly about that which we are right? so that we discussed yesterday that what we say about attachment is to call something in this realm mine right? and the mine implies that there is a me that owns something but we are then not talking about the truth of what we are we are talking about the imagined one you are invisible unattached and formless now for the seeker he might enjoy the sound of these words <laughs> but actually if he was to try and find what is invisible unattached and formless it is very frustrating you see how will you discover that if you, this is about discovery how are we to find that will unattached and formless how do we start even looking for it where do we go 
this is the whole uh, when the seeker shows his frustration eventually in satsang saying what am i doing here i am not really getting anything you see i have been coming here and initially some joy and peace was there but even that is gone <laughs> you see this happens in satsang isn't it i have been coming for so many months and uh, it was nice I just feel like it's a waste of time i am not finding anything at all even that i knew i have forgotten now i can't even speak knowledgeably about anything <laughs> you see so in this that frustration is encapsulated because what is the discovery we are not discovering anything phenomenally tangible covering this invisible unattached and formless but is the frustration warranted because we know this already it is only our mind which cannot fathom this you see so when we go back we contemplate we look at these things and i have given you the tools for it that's why i ask you are you aware now is your finding of this awareness of this awareness something that is visible does it have a form is it attached even to say that of something we see that this content that which we are aware of keeps changing but this aware to be able to say i am aware of it means i am already aware that there is this awareness here very slowly it is not confusing only the mind wants to fight this in a big way i am only simply saying that are aware of something you must first be aware of awareness otherwise how would you say i am aware of it you see just like to be able to say i am smelling this i am seeing this i am hearing this we must first be aware what smelling is hearing is seeing is in the same way to say i am aware of something just know what aware is okay. and this doesn't have any attributes it's invisible in that way and formless so then what happens is yes awareness is here okay. but even in this statement awareness is here there is a tendency for the mind to create some distance between awareness and what this means yes yes i know awareness is here that's why i have given you another tool which is who is aware of this awareness use this one who is aware of this awareness and for those of you who are open enough you will find that you find that this is the recognition of the self i is this awareness i am finding that i i am formless i am unattached and i am not a physical object in this realm with attributes invisible so this is the recognition of the no thing the unborn the eternal that we speak about
who is aware of the awareness i is this i distinct from awareness no there i find no separation there is nowhere where i is but awareness is not or awareness is but i am not and also then the sage has given us a way to find this also he says you are the witness of all things so before we come to the be happy part this phrase is very important you see he says all things you see very important he doesn't say something you are the witness of things you see he said all things that means only that which is witnessed exists is it is it too far to go mm-hmm. but even physics is coming to these conclusions isn't it nothing exists without the observer so so, mm-hmm. so that means that this is our dream is it because if i am the witness of all things that means only that which i am the witness of exists this like in a dream if i get a newspaper from america <laughs> so the newspaper exists but does the america exist see just like this this waking state is just like the dream state that which exists in our attention that exists because he says you are the witness of all things this is a very direct statement see don't allow the mind to misinterpret it it's very very direct needs no no disclaimers from it. you are the witness of all things you see and very often in satsang we have said that the universe is that which you are aware of mm-hmm. then he says be happy <laughs> you see and this seems to be like at a different level from where we were speaking just now so i feel this is also very beautiful because the sage is saying that once we know this you see is there any reason to be unhappy in fact this must be cause for celebration isn't it that i am no thing you see that i am that which cannot be hurt that which is formless and unattached that has no attributes and yet i witness play of this realm okay so so much fearlessness so much cause for okay so the sage janaka was sitting with the sulky sicker face yeah <laughs> as, as, as you know this but to have to be happy person you see many times we talk like this you say just this you are not a person you see you are not a person you are not a thing you, you are not even consciousness you are that which is aware even of consciousness you see that in which god takes birth and god goes back to sleep what must you be how is it possible for us to suffer now therefore he says be happy <laughs>